battles I could not have fought. All my longings and all my dreams, all my failures, his power redeems. All my possessions, all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. Can you imagine what your life would be like if that song were a statement of fact about you? When you sing it, are you expressing a hope or are you declaring the truth? Is Jesus honestly your Lord of all? If you have trouble answering these questions, listen to what Jesus himself says about him in Matthew 6, 24. No one, he said, can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus assumes that you'll inevitably be the servant of somebody or something. You have no choice over whether you will serve. Your only choice is which you will serve. Either God or money will be your master. One or the other, take your pick. Now, you may object to the option. In fact, you may be thinking to yourself right now that you are free of obligation, that you are a servant to nobody and nothing. You are non-committed. If that's so, then this sermon is not for you. You can spend the next few minutes counting the lights in the ceiling, <laughs> or taking an imaginary trip to the beach, or perhaps mentally planning next week's schedule, because you're non-committed. And I have nothing to say to you this morning. On the other hand, instead of being non-committed, there are some, perhaps many here today, who are overcommitted. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, because I know some of you are overcommitted. You feel enslaved to so many different masters that you would gladly get the number down to just two. Right? What if he just had two? Four more demands are placed on you than you can handle. You cannot please everybody, no matter how hard you try, and in the process, you're being torn apart. So, if you are overcommitted, then friend, I have good news for you this morning. Jesus simplifies your struggles by reminding you that there are actually only two claims on your life, either God's or not God's. You will either do what God wants or you will do something else. So Jesus puts this principle down where you live. He says, you cannot serve both God and money. Now the reason you can't serve both of these masters is that they keep giving you contradictory orders. There is, you can serve two masters, but the only way you can do that is if you serve them in succession, one after the other, or if you serve them unequally, one with the occasional act and the other with the habitual service. Or if you serve them differently, one with your words and the other with your act deeds. But you can't really serve two masters in the same way at the same time. Unless, of course, both mas masters are on the same side, <laughs> one subordinate to the other. A soldier, for example, may at the, one, at the same time serve his commanding 
officer and his commander-in-chief, the president. He can do that as long as they are both giving him the same orders. It is though he were saving, serving one master. But you can't serve both God and money because they give you conflicting orders. God says, walk in faith. Money says, walk by sight. God says, be humble. Money says, be proud. God says, fix your mind on things above. Money says, fix your mind on things on earth. God says, don't worry about anything. Money says, be anxious about everything. God says, give your goods to the poor. Money says, keep your goods for yourself. God says, seek your security in the Creator. Money says, seek your security in the creation. Jesus is saying to you this morning, take your pick. Since you cannot serve both God and money, decide which it will be. And he offers to each of you an alternative, not an attitude. Now, let me illustrate what the difference of that is. Because when you join a social or service club, you add to your obligations. That is, you agree to pay dues, attend meetings, and other duties. But when you join the church, the body of Christ, he does not add to your obligations. In fact, he reorders your obligations with every claim subordinate to him. God wants every human being to give tithes, to tell the truth, to keep the Sabbath, to refrain from adultery and violence. These obligations apply to everybody, Christians and non-Christians alike. So that becoming a Christian and joining the church does not actually add these duties. Instead, it reorders them under the authority of God Almighty. God says, choose your master. It's remarkable that he should give people like you and me a choice. Think about it, a choice. Commas and cabbages obey their creator perfectly, but they do so without choosing to do it. To humankind alone, God has given the awesome freedom to choose him or to reject him. And thus we are able to rise above or fall beneath the rest of the created order. That kind of choice, of course, is not just a simple preference between vanilla and chocolate ice cream or between spray and roll-on deodorant. No, we are offered a choice between God and the world. Imagine that. God places himself as one of the alternatives in the cafeteria of life. And when you get to thinking about that, you will be overwhelmed and humbled by God's condescension and indulgence toward us. God says, choose, and then reminds you that what you choose will master your life. And that's the difference between an idol and the true and living God. Jesus said, you can't, we cannot serve both God and money. But that doesn't keep us from trying, does it? Does it? No, we still try. Now, no, though, for example, I've heard celebrity evangelists tearfully repent of their love affairs with women. I've never, ever heard one repent of their love affair with money. <laughs> Remember, 
while you're thinking about that, that there is no double standard. One for laity and one for clergy. No. It's just as wrong for lay people to serve money as for clergy to do so. None of us can serve two masters. Like the husband declaring an ultimatum to his wife, either I go or your mother goes. So God says, there is not enough room in your life for both of us. It's either me or your money. Take the pity. Now the word that Jesus used for money is the word man. In fact, some translations of the Bible transliterate that instead of translate. They just put the Greek word in, in uh, English uh, alphabetical order. But, but the word he used was mammon. And the root meaning of mammon is trust. And it's a good word. Originally, it referred to what one entrusted to a banker or a friend. Later, it came to mean not what one entrusted to another, but it, referred to, it refers to what one put his trust in. And that pernicious shift continues to happen all the time. Finally, mammon was recognized as an idol, that is, as a substitute god. Covetousness is, in fact, the root of all idolatry. I like uh, Peterson's, uh, the message translation of Philippians 3.19. Here it is. The easy street is a dead-end street. Those who live there make their bellies their gods, belches are their praise, and all they can think of is their act. God, Paul explicitly identifies covetousness with idolatry. Consumerism is the idolatry of our time, perhaps the idolatry of all time. Now, as long as we consider our worldly goods as matters entrusted to us by their real owner, as long as we do that, we are responsible stewards, serving but one master. But the moment we begin to trust, place our trust in them instead of the one who gave them, then we make them our God. And, they, and we become idolaters trying to serve two masters. I think of Jesus, Jesus warned a group of humble first century peasants against making money their God, how much more would he preach this message to people living comfortably in Mexico City? If Jesus were invited to be the guest preacher in Union Evangelical Church, I think he would surely pick this as his text. You cannot serve me and money. Yes, that's we need to hear. And when I say we, it includes me. I confess, friends, that I constantly struggle against the attitude that if I just had enough money in the bank, I wouldn't have to have so much faith. You hear me? In my worst moments, my worst moments, I would rather trust a bank balance than the promises of God. I'm ashamed to say that. I am tempted to serve man instead of the true and living Lord. How is it with you? Are you trying to serve both God and money? Jesus said you can't, can't do that. But though you cannot serve God and money, you can serve God with money. Money makes a very bad master, but a very good slave. For just as 
says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So the love of what money can do is the root of all kinds of good. Money is not intrinsically bad. If it is filthy lucre, as some say, then the one who handled it made it so. Friends, it's time that our money got converted. Mm. We can convert our money from an enemy of God to an ally of God by making its use subordinate to him and to his kingdom. You know, uh, a, a peso is a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing. It is, for those who have the eyes to see it, it is personal energy reduced to portable form and endowed with powers we we do not possess in ourselves. The peso can go where we cannot go. It can speak languages we cannot speak. It can lift burdens that we can't touch with our fingers. It can save lives with, with which we cannot directly deal. When you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord through our church, you are fulfilling God's purposes here and around the world. So I tell you this morning, you cannot serve God and money, but you can serve God with money. Your signed pledges, the pledges that you have in your bulletin this morning, perhaps you turned one in already, Sundays, but that pledge is your commitment to convert your money to the service of God next year through our church. It says to your money something important. It says to your money, you belong to me. I don't belong to you. I am not your servant. You are my servant. And since I serve the Lord Jesus, so will you. Let your money know who's boss, right? Let your money know who's boss. Jesus is Lord of all. I invite you to stand with me to close this service by singing, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You'll find the words in your bulletin at the, in the order of service. Sing it now with me.